is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. Back in the lab, Reggie and Luke back at it. Another episode, Superior Sports Talk, presented by Locked On Sports Minnesota. I got Carol Evans' very own Reggie Wilson with me. Life is good. Happy Wednesday, Reg. Hump day. Man, hump day. Hump day. I can't believe we're almost to the end of the week. It's kind of crazy. crazy. I feel like it just started. But, it's you know, back at it with my guy, Luke, underscore Spinman. Yes, sir. Fun little show lined up, <laughs> starting with where Daniil Hunter ranks in the NFL as a pass rusher, plus handing out some midseason awards for your Minnesota Twins, and later putting Reggie on the hot seat with what does it mean, all coming up on Superior Sports Talk. Remember to follow along on Locked On Minnesota YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, and on Twitter, smash that follow button, at Locked On Min, that's M-I-N, at Locked On M-I-N. All right. To football we go. 68 days until week one (laughs) NFL season kicks off. ESPN's latest article ranks the best pass rushers in football. Now, you want the good news or the bad news, Reg? Uh, Give me bad first. Always go bad. Bad news is Vikings don't have a single player in the top 10 rankings. Good news is nor does the entire NFC North. That means no Mm. Rashawn Gary or, you know, Aiden Hutchinson or anyone like that. So good news is Daniil Hunter did make the honorable mentions list in the article. And the article makes certain to note Hunter is, in fact, a top 10 pass rusher in the league when healthy. Only problem is... He's missed 26 games the last two seasons. One AFC coach was quoted saying, a long arm, power guy, greatest asset, speed and length. Those things will always cause problems. I didn't think he should be what he is. He certainly proved me and a lot of other people wrong. Hunter certainly proved everyone wrong. Drafted in the third round, 2015 out of LSU. Guy was kind of a no-namer, buried on a stacked LSU depth chart with Mm -hmm. not even a handful of career college sacks to his name. Still, Mike Zimmer, Rick Spielman saw enough in him to take a shot in the third round, develop those raw physical tools, and the rest is history. 85 games later, Hunter has 60 and a half career sacks. And I would argue he is Mike Zimmer's greatest draft and develop player he's ever handpicked and coached. Mm. Right ahead of maybe Eric Kendricks and Xavier Rhodes. But that's a discussion for another day. Reggie, your thoughts on Daniil Hunter in the honorable mentions category and where this guy is at in his career as one of the better edge rushers in the NFL as we sit here today. So, okay, I, I understand the honorable mention here just because, mm-hmm. like, you know, when you look at some of the other guys in here, Chase Young, Trey Hendrickson, mm-hmm. Shaq Barrett, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, I think that if he's healthy, which is what they, they mentioned in here, but if mm-hmm. he's healthy, I think he's a top 10 guy. Who the heck is Brian Burns? <laughs> I have never heard of this dude before. <laughs> He's number eight on this list. Sounds made up. Yeah, like I'm looking at him and like God bless him. Like I'm sure he's a a young up and coming guy. He's only 24, plays for the Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oh, he was a first round pick in 2019. Yeah, he went like top 15. Yeah. So, so, I mean, look, okay. All right. I see Mm -hmm. him, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, who, I I, I, I don't know who that is. But I think. Honestly, if Hunter is healthy last season, he definitely makes this list. Um, they got Cam Jordan on here, mm-hmm. you know, at his age. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got you got Chase Young on here as well. And it's like, look, if he doesn't, um, you know, tear his ACL and all that stuff, like he's probably another guy that's that's probably top 10 on this list. And so, look, I get it. Hunter is, is a, a dog. Like – you know, just seeing him, you know, like standing next to him as I've gone to several Vikings games and, and seen him up in the press box or whatever like that, like the dude is is yoked. Like He's wild. He's like a created player. Yeah. Again. The first time I stood next to him at training camp, uh, he, he's like a Mortal Kombat player. Jax, those yeah, big arms, man. Absolutely. He's nuts. Yeah, I love Jax, by the way. Uh, Great call out. <laughs> 
<laughs> Love Jax. But if I'm a quarterback and I'm seeing this dude chasing after me, I'm like, ah! You know, I'm, I'm like running for my life. I'm like, get out, get me out of here. Like, are you guys not blocking enough? <laughs> Block him, him. Block him. You see him? So like, he's a very menacing, scary player when he's healthy. But you know, like this article said, 26 games over the past two seasons he's missed. But when he's healthy, man, good lord! Like even when he was healthy last season before he tore the peck, like he was disrupting games. He was looking like the Daniil Hunter that we come to we we've come to know Mm -hmm. over the years and so you know i I mean look kudos to him for even being an honorable mention like because that just means that he is who he is which is him game changer game wrecker when healthy that's just what vikings fans want to see i think we're at the point where i've said it last week even with sedaris i'm not even getting greet i'm not even asking for 16 17 games just give me like 13 14 that's all i want from him because Mm -hmm. you know seeing him go down with another big injury would just be so heartbreaking i'd be interested to see what hunter's over under is on total sacks this year Mm -hmm. and you can do that on bet online Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs from MLB to NFL futures. Bet Online offers you all the latest news, scores, and updates and makes betting easy. Go to betonline.com today. That's betonline.com. So, no Zedarius Smith on the list. Uh, again, coming off a back injury, only 29 years old, though. Fourth best pass rusher when healthy two seasons ago. No Rashawn Gary for the Packers. Also, how about Robert Quinn getting no love as well? Guy's just wow. been a, a staple in every team's pass rush he's played for throughout his career. Obviously, we see him twice a year now in Chicago. Who's the bigger snub, in your opinion, of the three? Uh, definitely Robert Quinn. I yep. am a St. Louis Rams guy through mm-hmm. and through, and mm-hmm. Robert Quinn was a game wrecker. I think yeah. one year he had 20 and a half sacks. And Chris Long was like, this dude is like the, the greatest dude I've ever played with. <laughs> And, like, going back to those old Jeff Fisher teams, you had Mm -hmm. Robert Quinn, Chris Long, Michael Brockers, and Aaron Donald all on the same defensive line. Cheat codes, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Four first rounders. Unbelievable. Yeah, just scary stuff. Mm -hmm. And, honestly, I'm surprised a guy like Aaron Donald is not on this list. I know he's technically a a defensive tackle or Mm -hmm. whatever, but the dude just gets to the quarterback. You mm-hmm. know, like he's he's very close to 100 sacks in his career in the regular season. And so you don't put a guy like that on here. But, you know, you got you got room for both Bosa's, which, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Max Crosby is on here. Uh, they, they got one of his former teammates. Von Miller is on here, which, you know, Von didn't necessarily have like the best year last year. But, mm-hmm. you know, he he had a good enough year for a six year, 120 million dollar contract. Ooh. You know, but, you know, you got guys like Chandler Jones, like I said, Cam Jordan, uh, Khalil Mack on here. You you get Khalil Mack on here, but but you don't um, you don't have his former teammate and Robert Quinn. Like, it's just kind of weird. Like, you know, and and this article is talking about how Mack has slipped, you know, over the past couple years because he hasn't had a double digit sack season since 2018. That's wild. And so you're like, okay, but you still put them on here at number nine. Mm -hmm. And you you skip out on guys who have been really productive, like Quinn, like Aaron Donald. And, you know, some of these these things don't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, I would even venture to put Trey Hendrickson in the the top ten. He had 13 and a half sacks his last year in New Orleans. And then last year with the Bengals, he had 14. So I'm like, well, how does that guy – you know, are we still just, you know, putting guys in on name recognition alone? Like, well, I, that, I don't understand. That's what it kind of is. It seems like it feels like anyways, Von Miller, Khalil Mack, you just mentioned it. More of the name brand recognition. Mm-hmm. Here's what's mind blowing about this whole list. The top two guys are in the same division. TJ mm-hmm. Watt, Miles Garrett, AFC North. And then four of the top nine guys are playing in the AFC West and all four of them or on two teams, Bosa and Mack on the Chargers, Chandler Jones, Max Crosby on the Raiders. What kind of insanity is this? If you're building a team <laughs> from scratch, yeah. which duo are you drafting, Bosa and Mack or Jones and Crosby? Oh, uh, without a doubt, Mack 
and Bosa. Like, Absolutely. Without a doubt. Glad we're on the same page there, yeah, for sure. I, I, I love me some Chandler Jones. Yep. And, yep. you know, I, I think the world of Mac, Max Crosby with mm-hmm. everything that he's gone through and him mm-hmm. coming back and, mm-hmm. and being the, the dog that he is. But, come on, man. If, first of all, you got youth on the side of the other one with Chandler with Jones, Bosa. 32, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and look... You know, Mac hasn't necessarily been the Mac that, you know, you thought he was. We're used to see, right. But I think now that he's going to have Bosa on the other side, we start singing, return of the Mac. <laughs> like, if he's healthy, I think he's going to be like it's that doing Mac his truck, thing. man. 18 yeah. wheeler Mac truck coming at you. I'm with you. I got to go Bosa and Mac. I have to. Just yeah. from a pure talent standpoint. And. You know, again, accepting that age factor as well. Crosby is young, but Chandler's 32. Got to go with Mac and Bosa. Mm-hmm. And I think when superstars get stuck on bad, I mean really bad teams, they often decline in play and have a few off years for a variety of different reasons, yeah. getting triple covered, whatever it may be. And I think that's what's happened in Chicago with Mac with a few lost years, I'll call them. I think all the talent still sitting there, ready to bust out in a big way, finally get freed mm-hmm. up. And like you said, see some single one-on-one pass protection with both on the opposite side for the first time in years. Pretty cool to see these rankings and get some healthy debate going. I want to hear from you. Go comment on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you think. 68 days until week one of the NFL season. Vikings training camp just three weeks away. Until then, Reggie and I got you covered every step of the way. All right, to baseball we go. Mm. Minnesota Twins. Hey, it's fun when they win, isn't it? Easy game. <laughs> World Series champs. Here we come. Twins throttle the Sox last night, 8-2. to two. Twins hit four home runs off a guy who had only allowed five all year. And then when he got pulled, they hit another five bomb shots in all. Alex Kirilov with two of them. Miranda, Kepler, and Polanco all go yard. Josh Winder goes five strong. Seven hits, but just two earned runs. Bullpen comes in, ring them up, sit them down, four scoreless innings. It's a double whammy. Twins win, White Sox lose, Guardians lose to the Tigers. Look at that. Twins lead jumps to four and a half over Cleveland, Jeez. six and a half over to the Sox. All right. And for now, Reg, life is good in Twins country once yeah. again. Yeah, you know, um, Winder comes out, puts mm-hmm. in a quality start. And then those bats, man, four home runs, like, fun, goodness man. gracious. Hey, if Alex- I told you one, two, three in your lineup, Arise, Correa, Buxton will go one for 13. Wow. And you'd still put up eight runs. You'd look at me like, this dude should be in the insane asylum or something, right? But, but we talked about this before. Like, mm-hmm. these other bats are capable. You know, you never know from... Night to night, you know, if if Buck or Correa or Rise is not doing, you know, what they're supposed to do, then all of a sudden, like Gary Sanchez, mm-hmm. you know, last night it was Polanco hit a, a two run bomb on his birthday, he turned twenty nine yesterday, Ooh. and then I mentioned this on um <laughs> on the the sports cast, Alex Kirilov was acting like it was his birthday. Yeah, You know, pitchers just throwing them birthday presents. Here you go, buddy. Oh, thank you. I'll take this one out of the Don't park. need the gift receipt for that one. I'm going to yeah, keep no, that one. No, keep thank that you. one. I'm, I'm going to keep that one. Hey, hey, here's another present for you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to hit that one out of the park, too. <laughs> Second career uh, multi-home run game. And so it was, it was interesting, man. Like, I thought, you know, when the rain came in the eighth inning, I'm like, well, the game's out of reach anyway. You might as well just call it. Just call, call it. it. Let's go home. But, you know, they got a chance to, to finish it on out. And it was all good. I think this is important, man. I mentioned it, you know, on the sportscast last night. Everybody is talking about the Guardians, you know, and them nipping at the the Twins' heels in the division. But you got to watch out for the White Sox as well because they they're be right one there. good they're one good streak away mm-hmm. from right. going ahead and and challenging the Twins in this division. So in series like this one, you hate the last couple series against the Guardians turned out the way that it, that it did because their lead could really balloon in this point. But Series like this one, even if they lose this one today, you know, they've taken two of three from the White Sox, which is good enough to keep them ahead in the standings. And you want to see them continue to do that as they move forward, because, you know, I just I just don't trust it, man, especially when you look at how the bullpen has played so far this season and, you know, the, the variables, you know, last night. 
Archer goes on the injured list out of nowhere with with left hip I tightness. Him. I jinxed or, him yesterday. Yeah, I know. I know. Shame on you. But My fault. with the the injuries and the bullpen inconsistencies, like when they have a chance to get these type of games, they got to get them. Mm -hmm. And you, you like to see what they did last night. Yeah, it's scary, too, about Chicago because they've never really got on a heater yet. They haven't gone on this mm -hmm. hot streak yet, and yep. they're still only six and a half games back. And we know a lot of experts had them to win this division based yep. off just the pure talent on the roster and pitching staff alone. So it's yep. scary to think that eventually in baseball, such a long season, you know they're going to go on a hot run here. Yeah, eventually. look what the Braves did. Yeah, look what the Braves did. Exactly. Great point. So that's something to think about as well. And also... Just so, so, so clutch when you can throw out your number four or five pitcher and get wins like this, isn't yep. it? I mean, Weiner wasn't even supposed to start. Chris Archer before the game, a little tightness in the hip. They pull him. Weiner's on the mound all of a sudden just hours before the game. Hey, you're starting, kid. The depth yeah. of the starting pitching rotation after – just countless innings. We know him. Kenta Maeda before the year even started. Chris Paddock only gives him a couple starts before he goes down. Mm -hmm. Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, Dylan Bundy have all missed time. But guys like Devin Smeltzer have been huge. Great. Josh Weiner, Cole Sands is even progressing a little bit. It's just so valuable because they're always going to be guys who are needed when the top stars go down. Chris Archer, again, latest victim. He goes on the 15-day IL this week. Hopefully, he can come back healthy and return soon. Okay, time to hand out some mid-season awards for your right. favorite team. Some jewelry, if you will. And if I was handing out jewelry, I'd be using... Blue Nile Jewelry. Make mm. your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get 50 bucks off purchases of $500 or more. Use code LOCKEDON. That's code LOCKEDON. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, Twins Awards. Here we go. First up, let's just jump right into it. Team MVP. Who's the MVP of the Minnesota Twins this year, Reggie? Oh, can it be co-MVPs? Sure, I'll give you I, one in 1A, yeah. All right, I'll do Louisa Rise and Byron Buxton. Easy answer. I think The heart and soul of the team, the face of the franchise, when healthy, mm -hmm. maybe the most electrifying player in baseball. Yep. And the Twins got him. Yep. It's crazy. He's only batting 222. It doesn't feel like it. Leads the team with 22 home runs and slugging percentage. Tied for most runs. Scored with Luis Arise with 41. Not to mention just an absolute defensive stud out there in center field showing off that incredible speed and range. I got Byron Bucks in your team MVP. Certainly could be a case to be made for sure for Luis Arise as well. Nobody's going to argue that. It's yep. just scary to think about Bucks and what this man could do with the injuries turned off. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If he could play... Even just like 140 games. I'm not even getting greedy here. 140 is all I want, man. Don't want to jinx it. I'll knock on this wood, but he's trending that way. He's looking I good this it. season. I love it. All that huff and puff, the turmoil about, oh, we're going to have to give Buxton every third, fourth day off. Twins fans losing their minds. Heads popping <laughs> off their body. Hey, you're right, man. Trended for about a buck 40. I'll take that any and every season. All right, Absolutely. next up, Cy Young. Who's the twin Cy Young pitcher this year thus far? Uh, if I had to go one, I'd probably go Sonny Gray. You know, with all the injuries that have taken place, it's not an easy-as-you-think decision. I mean, yeah. usually there's kind of one clear-cut guy here, but it's really been a total group effort. In fact, the lowest ERA from starting pitchers in the MLB, the Twins rank fifth. That's with amazing. a three-five-three, fifth best ERA That's amazing. from starting pitchers in the bigs. You tell fans that before the season starts – they look at you like you belong in the insane asylum. <laughs> Before he went down with COVID, I think the easy choice was going to be Joe Ryan. But Oh, absolutely. And if you're talking just the most talented pitcher right now, like who's the hottest guy mm -hmm. on the staff, I think you go with Johan Duran. Like if we're playing, you know, MLB the show on PlayStation, Duran has the highest overall rating maybe. But mm -hmm. I had to do a double take, by the way. He's only got five saves on the year, but 36 mm. innings pitched, wow. 48 strikeouts and just Sheesh. six walks uh, 48 strikeouts six walks that ratio is absolutely wild but Cy Young usually goes to a starting pitcher of course and yeah it's got to be between Joe Ryan and Sonny Gray both very close to one another statistically in innings both pitched around 60 innings and whip 
they're separated by a hundredth of a decimal, 1.04 and 1.05 going to Sonny Gray. Joe Ryan's six and three on the year. Sonny Gray's four and one on the year, but Sonny has him in the ERA and earn runs category. Also has a slightly better strikeouts to walk ratio. So I'm with you. I'm giving the edge to Sonny just by a hair for Cy Young. Next one up, how about rookie of the year or better yet, just best up and comer right now? Like who's the most exciting and promising young stud on the Twins right now? Now, this is tough. There's a lot of options here. So, if Royce Lewis was healthy, you'd probably go him. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, man, this is tough. So, I would probably go either Kirilov, mm -hmm. looking at how he's been since he's uh, gotten the call back up. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, the guy you just said, Duran. Like, the dude has been money this season. Like, he's, you know, like you said, only five saves. But, like... When he gets in the game, usually you feel good about what's going to happen. He's electric. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to keep Durant out of this conversation. I'm just focusing right now, just for me personally, about these young hitters that we always talk Fine. about at the bottom of the lineup. Fine. But no, I'm with you. Like, a lot of young, fun names here to choose from. And my heart wants to say Kirilov, because lately, you just said it. He's been on a tear ever since he's been called back up about two, three weeks ago. But mm -hmm. Kyle Garlick, with 14 less at-bats, has him in home runs, runs scored, batting average, and walks, yeah. and is also almost tied with him in hits and RBIs, just two behind Kirilov in both categories. So okay. I just love what Kirilov's been doing. He's been a machine the last three weeks. But mm -hmm. I think just statistically, I got to go with Garlic today. But ask me at the All-Star break, my answer might change. You got I'll one other you guy again. you want to throw in there? I'll ask you again. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Those were my two with uh, Duran and Kirilov. Yep. Like, those were, those were the guys, man. I, I think those are... Those are guys that, that I think the, the Twins can really kind of hang their futures on. And when Royce Lewis comes back, throw him into the mix as well, wherever they're going to play him, depending on what happens with Correa. Just a lot of fun, young, promising, just raw talent out there to be developed. And like he said, get Royce Lewis back in the mix too. Maybe you keep Carlos Correa around for a couple more years. Buxton mm -hmm. keeps progressing. I think there's a guy named Miguel Sano who might come back eventually someday. That's Maybe crazy. he'll do like, something yeah, too. Like, that's kind of crazy. Like dude, The Twins have been doing this without Sano, and it's almost like they don't need him. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one, breakout player. Who's the breakout player for the Twins in 2022? Duh, it's Luis Duh. Rice. Right. Duh. Copy paste. I mean, <laughs> think about it. I don't think there was a, a easier no brainer on this entire list. What have Luis Rice has done this year is, I mean, dare I say, magical so far? Just a, a yeah. Rod Carew light what we're watching for some of the elder statesmen who grew up watching Twins legend Rod Carew. Batting 346, 94 hits. Nobody gets on base more. Leads the team with a 419 on base percentage. 46 runs scored. Just a pillar at the top of this order. And is obviously but consistent as they come. You don't hit yep. 346 in the middle of July. Not being consistent. No one saw this coming, I don't think, from Luis Arise. At least not to this level. Right, For sure, right. the Twins breakout star. I'll give you another one, though, just because that was so easy. I'll dig a little Fine. bit deeper. Twins brought this guy on after being a shell of his former self on the mound the last few years. And I know they just put him on the IL, but Chris Archer has been rock solid as the number three or four pitcher in the rotation. I know he only goes four or five innings, but every time you look at the box score, it's like he only allows one run, one earned run, maybe two on an off day. 15 games started, over 60 innings pitch, allowed less runs than Joe Ryan, who we talk about mm. as the ace of the rotation. I think Archer has broken out of that shell he's been in and out of that funk and back to his old ways under Rocco and the pitching coaches. I'm with that. Yeah, I'm with that. Like he, they they really manage him well. They're like, look, you're not going past, you know, five, six innings, bucko. But, you know, when you're in there, do your thing. And yep. we trust they, you. And it's, it's tough because, you know, he waited like almost like a month and a half or more like to get his first win of the, oh, <laughs> of the that's season. That's right. I remember that. That's yeah. Right. So it's that's just right. like. It's just like, man, like his his numbers could be even better if he would have gotten a little bit more run support in some of those early starts. But, you know, better late than never, I guess. 
Yeah, they had a game plan clearly going into the season. I didn't like it at first because it put a lot more pressure on our relievers, our bullpen. And it's like, Archer's only thrown 68 pitches and you're pulling him in the fourth? Like, what are we yeah. doing? He looks fine. He looks great. Yeah. Um, but clearly that game plan has worked to a T. It's been solid. They needed to get some more structure around him yep. as far as trying to revive his career a little bit. And I think they've done that. And again, just another nice depth piece in that rotation once you get past the big two big three starting pitchers. Twins now 5-0 and versus the White Sox this year. Division lead back up to four and a half games over the Guardians. Afternoon game today, first pitch 110. Joe Ryan taking the mound. Rest assured, Reggie and I got you covered tomorrow to break it all down. All right, time has come. Favorite segments here. Putting Reggie on the hot seat, covering all the latest hot topics in Minnesota sports. First up, I don't know if you caught this. NFL expert Warren Sharp took to Twitter yesterday to ask which NFL team will improve the most solely on their head coaching change alone. While receiving a plethora of feedback, the answer is still unclear. A lot of different answers thrown out there. But what does it mean when it comes to which team will improve the most after making their recent coaching switch this season? If you haven't seen it, I'll give you a few of the obvious ones. Obviously, Chicago, Nagy's out. Denver, Fangio's out. Hackett's in. Jacksonville, that was a popular answer. Myers out. Doug Peterson gets brought in. Uh, of course, Mike Zimmer, Kevin O'Connell, Joe Judge in New York for the Giants, yep, and yep. Uh, Dabble comes in. What would you think of this list? It's a good list. Um, I think you you kind of take Chicago out of it, man. They mm -hmm. they got some time to, that they need to mm -hmm. get them get their lives get you know just yeah. get, they get, get their affairs in order. Yep. Yeah, just come on, come on. <laughs> um, I, I think. Really, if you're talking about maybe, you know, some of the most dynamic, I think going from Fangio to Hackett and then seeing what the team has done subsequently, you know, bringing Russell Wilson over and, you know, just changing the whole, like, game with that. Like, I think that's something that, you know, they said purely on coaching change, but you can't, like, not take that into account with For how sure. the roster has improved with that. No, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, and the defense is going to be great because they, you know, Fangio had the defense going, you know, before. And it's just like, all right, you know, Fangio and Donatel had the defense mm -hmm. going before. And now, you know, getting uh, an offensive-minded head coach in there, like this team should be solid. You know, you look at probably the biggest, where I say the biggest improvement happens is Jacksonville. They got actually a, a, a actual NFL head coach now with mm -hmm. Doug Peterson and you know you you've seen the work that he's done with quarterbacks before you got Trevor Lawrence didn't have the best rookie season but in his sophomore year you know I, I think somebody like Doug is going to be able to stabilize him a little bit and and get him going in the right direction and get that team headed in the right direction and I don't think they'll they'll probably win more than maybe like six games or something like that but they they have a lot of talent on that team you know, you go back to last year's draft. Travis Etienne didn't even play all of last season. That's crazy. And that's a weapon that they're going to have now with, with Trevor Lawrence, you know, coming out of the backfield, maybe lining them up, wide receiver, whatever you mm -hmm. want to do with them. He's a dynamic player that, you know, you are looking forward to seeing him in the league. Another one that I think, too, is – Joe Judge, you know, they've been talking about, I've been seeing some comments on Twitter and things like that. Sterling Shepard saying like, hey, this offense is going to be dynamic. You know, things just hinge on what Danny Dimes is going to do. But uh, that nickname is funny, by the way. But <laughs> I, I think Dayball, looking at what he did with Josh Allen in Buffalo, I think, you know, if you're a Giants fan, you're probably like, wow, like I think th this could be this could be something. I think he could he could stabilize maybe like a – Mitchell Trubisky type, mm -hmm. you know, thing in, in his best years in Chicago. Maybe you you have, you know, Danny Dimes doing doing things like that in that offense. But honestly, for me, and I'm not even playing hometown homer here because I'm not one. Uh, I have no rooting interest in this at all. But I think going from Zimmer to O'Connell is a huge deal. You know, they, their philosophies are just totally different. You go from this old school, you know, throwback type of head coach to O'Connell, young guy, fiery guy, just, you know, 
from all things we've seen, a fun guy, you know, coming in and, and stabilizing this offense, bringing the offense to this uh, next millennium, if you will. Like that, the offense was just, you know, it, it was great to see what the offense did, even though like they didn't necessarily have the 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 coaching staff in place to to stabilize them. You you hope to see that moving forward this team kind of takes the next step from an offensive consistency standpoint with Kevin O'Connell being there and some of the, the improvements that they've made with some of the players that they've brought in on defense. I think just purely on this coaching change and, you know, we've said it and seen it in the past, the guys that get plucked from this Sean McVay coaching tree, they mm -hmm. usually come in and, and do well, you know, third year in the league, Zach Taylor takes his team to the Super Bowl. You know, uh, Matt LaFleur has got the, got the Packers always in contention since he's been there. And, you know, you look at things like that, you look at those trends and you think like, you know, with this roster that he took over, the improvements that they've made in the offseason, the guys that they've drafted, you would think that, you know, with his presence and his, you know, offensive mindedness, his his aptitude, mm -hmm. um, bringing the offense up to this century, I think that's a team that you look at and you're like, man, this team could do something. And and you you totally see this team winning the division possibly, and and also um, maybe making some noise in the playoffs as well if they can get there. Yeah, well said. A lot of good points. It's a long list. Ten different coaches for ten different teams yeah. out of 32, obviously, NFL teams. I think you start with who is just the worst coach, X's and O's wise, and player evaluation. And you called it out, my two, Urban Meyer in Jacksonville, and, and then again, Joe Judge in New York. And then you add in, again, two offensive-minded coaches there mm -hmm. in Peterson and Dabble. Those got to be my two as well. But I'm looking at every team and coach that went from a defensive-minded coach to an offensive-minded coach, right. exactly like you said. And I'm going to keep a close eye on that because it's crazy – if you go back even six years and watch the NFL, how much the NFL has changed into an offensive, pass-happy league. The rules yep. are literally changed now to favor the offense. And if you don't have an offensive scheme that you can put up 30, 35, 40 points on any given week, it's just going to mm -hmm. be tough for you to keep up in the NFL. Of course, defense still plays a huge factor. Some people will say defense wins championships. But in today's day and age, with the rules that have taken place and changed over the last handful of years, I'm looking at all these former defensive-minded heavy set coaches like Zimmer and go into an offensive-minded set head coach like Kevin O'Connell. I'm with you. I'm going to be very interested to see how this all shakes out, not just this year, but over the next two, three years. Because, hey, this new NFL pass-happy league aired out, first one to score 40 points, it ain't going anywhere. It ain't changing. Right. This is the new school, and this is how it's going to look for a long time, probably the next decade plus, and if I'm even not longer. And I'm interested, too, to see what, what happens because, you know, the defiance that we've seen from guys like John Elway in the past where, you know, it's gone to like a pass-happy league and he's still mm -hmm. hiring the best defensive guy. You know, like when he mm -hmm. hired um, Fangio, everybody was just like, what? What is he what? doing? Uh, and what's playoffs. interesting is, yeah, and what's interesting is – in this particular hiring cycle, four of these teams went from offensive-minded guys to defensive-minded guys. You got Chicago, Houston, uh, you got Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. and New Orleans. Yeah, All those guys go from offensive guys to defensive guys. And I just wonder, you know, with how the league is going, as you stated, how that's going to work out. Yeah, I'm looking at this list of former coaches, man. Some big names on there. Obviously, Urban Meyer, pff, see you, goodbye. Don't want you in the NFL anymore. John Gruden may never coach again, that's for sure. But like Mike Zimmer or Sean Payton, maybe Bruce Arians is really done for good. But like Brian Flora, I mean, when do these guys get another crack at a head coaching job or just another coaching job in the NFL? Who do you think's back first, Sean Payton or Mike Zimmer? Payton, for sure. Yeah, I think so, too. Mike Zimmer's just out at his ranch right now on the four-wheeler up in the deer stand. He's good, man. He's chilling. He's fine. He, he may take a little breather. All right, that's a wrap. Back here tomorrow, breaking down more Twins, Vikings, plenty more. Remember, 
like, rate, review, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Join us every day for another episode covering all the biggest topics in Minnesota sports. He's Reggie Wilson. Follow him on Twitter at Reggie Wilson TV and on CARE 11. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter at Luke underscore Spinman. Tune in tomorrow to Superior Sports Talk, part of Locked on Sports Minnesota. For Reggie, I'm Luke. Until tomorrow, I'm signing out. Be blessed. Spread love today. This is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked on Sports Minnesota.